Brian Jakovic and welcome to Stellar Screencast. In this screencast, I'll be going over using Chef to script your environment configuration. Chef is a Ruby-based scripting language designed to build environment components. It is now also being used for deployments as well, but in this screencast, I'm going to focus specifically on the environment configuration. Chef embraces item potency, which means that you can execute Chef multiple times against the same environment, and the end result will always be the same. For instance, if you were to create a directory called Stellagen Screencast, if it were already there when Chef is run, then it would just move on to the next command. With Chef, you can pretty much do anything you need to, even more so because you have the power of Ruby behind you. You may ask, why does this matter? Well, with other scripting languages that force you to conform to their DSL, you are confined to whatever resources they have already written for you that maybe download files or direct, create directories or deal with APIs. Whereas with Chef, you can use Ruby to do whatever you need to do if it's not already created. I generally find this most useful when I need to loop through multiple variables to pass them through a Chef resource. Like in the example I currently have on my screen, I have five directories, test one through five. If I wanted to add them or to create directories out of all five of them, I would simply just add a directory loop inside there. So that it would take that add directories variable and parse through it, put it through a block, and then create a directory for each string in that variable. As I mentioned before, you have a multitude of options with Chef. You can do more than just create and set directories. You can create files, download files, install packages, start and stop services, and much, much more. In Chef, you can use resources called cookbooks that define how to configure your system. Each cookbook defines a scenario such as everything you need to install MySQL, and then it contains all the components that are required to support that scenario. A, co a cookbook component consists of maybe a recipe, attributes, or libraries. These are all part of Chef, and, and there are much, much more. There's providers, but I'm, I'm just going to stick with the three main ones. Recipes which are more or less the building block of a, of a chef cookbook. They're used to do the actual work of the installation. If you wanted to install MySQL in a uh, Linux environment, then you would write the code to do the installation inside your cookbook. Attributes are for setting variables that so can be used throughout the cookbook. You might set the version of MySQL to install and inside the attribute file, and then you, you would reference that attribute inside your recipes to do the installation. And then lastly, libraries are used for creating code snippets for your cookbooks to use. If you need to retrieve a file from AWS S3 and it requires you to pass in credentials, you will most likely create an AWS S3 library to deal with that, and then you would just reference that library in, or inside your recipe. As I said, there are many other components of Chef, and if you're interested, I would highly recommend you go to the Ops Code Wiki for additional information. I generally find that the most useful learning mechanism is to complete a real task to learn the technology. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write a set of Chef cookbooks for installing a Jenkins environment that runs on Tomcat. The environment will consist of a Linux EC2 instance that has Chef, Tomcat, and Jenkins installed on it. We'll be using a Tomcat cookbook, a Jenkins cookbook, and then a Chef run list, which mm -hmm. tells Chef what to install on the target environment. So with that, we're going to, we're going to start with the Tomcat cookbook. Here, I've already built out the skeleton of the, of the Tomcat cookbook, where you have the attributes and recipes, and then inside you have the default RB. And with Chef, whenever you tell a cookbook to run, it initially looks for the default RB file, unless you specify otherwise. So if I were to say, if I were to specify the Tomcat cookbook, it would instantly look for the Tomcat cookbook's default RB. If I were to specify Tomcat, and then I included the Windows specific, so it would be Tomcat home phone Windows, then it would look for the Windows.RB. But for this particular screencast, I'm just going to keep it really default, and we're just going to use the default RB. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Tomcat. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a package to do it. We 
using the chef package resource. And I'm passing in the name of it that I want to install, and then I'm passing the action install. This really leverages the chef language to do this, where the package is a chef resource, and then once you pass in the name of the variable, or the name of the package, it knows what to do. This will probably be using, well, it, it will be using yum to do the installation, but if you were on a, uh, a De uh, Debian or Ubuntu system, then it would probably use app get instead. Chef takes away a lot of that complexity from the user, from the person, the developer, um, and it puts it more on the, the Chef language itself. Okay, given that I've installed my Tomcat package, I'm now, I need to put a service in there. I actually need to start the, the Tomcat service. So to do that, I'm just going to put a Tomcat service. Okay, so what that's doing is it will start the Tomcat 6 service, um, and it'll enable it so that when the, if the instance were to be shut down and then restart, it would, it would turn back on. It's like doing check and fix 3. Okay, so we now have the installation, and then we are starting a service. One other thing I know that we need to do is we need to change the directory of the Tomcat 6 home and, and change the ownership and, and group. I do is I'm create a directory. And then the last thing I'm adding here is recursive. And what that means is that everything inside this directory I want to also inherit the group and owner. So they'll all everything inside will get the Tomcat group and owner. Okay, so this will install Tomcat, it will fix the directory uh, ownership, and then it will um, start the service. But the one thing about this particular Tomcat cookbook is that it's not very flexible. We aren't using variables for anything, and, and there's a decent amount of app, uh, duplication. Also, what happens if you run this on a Debian system? Will it know what to do, or what if there's additional packages that need to be installed? So I'm going to quickly fix this using the attributes, uh, as I explained earlier. Now we have some attributes, and then we can reference them inside of our, our recipe by just calling them. The first one I grabbed is the, the Tomcat Home. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to uh, call out to it. So I, I've done a little bit of attribute work. The next thing that I want to do is I want to, if I'm installing on a Debian system, I want to install the Tomcat 6 admin package as well as the Tomcat 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the value for platform. Okay, now I've basically what I've done is I'm assigning the Tom pack, Tomcat packages variable to value for platform, whatever that produces. What value for platform does is it looks, it takes the particular OS that you're currently on and matches it to whatever you have here. So it either be Debian or whatever any other operating system. Since I'm going to be using the AWS version and it's pretty close to CentOS it won't be registered as Debian. Therefore, we'll be using the default, which it will only install the Tomcat 6 package. And to make sure that, is, that package installation happens, and there we go. We've leveraged Ruby to do the uh, installation. 
basically what happens is if it were to value it as Debian, it will take Tomcat 6 and Tomcat 6 admin and put it through this and it will install both. But since we're going to end up being the default Tomcat 6, it only really installs Tomcat 6. Okay, I think we're done with uh, Tomcat. Now we can move on to Jenkins. So Jenkins is going to be really simple. We're going to more or less just put a war onside the t onto the Tomcat uh, web apps directory, and that's about all. So I'm in the, I'm going to create a attributes first. So this could be Jenkins. Now we have our Jenkins war. I'm now going to create the recipe to put on there. And we're going to use the remote file attribute. It's one of Chef's resources. And we are going to leverage one of the Tomcat um, variables. Okay, so we're doing something a little bit different here. We are, inside our Jenkins recipe, we are referencing Tomcat uh, attributes. And generally you can't do this unless you have specified that Tomcat, or that Jenkins depends on Tomcat. And if you do, if you do that, then you are able to reference all of Tomcat's uh, attributes. And then, it, also, what we're doing here is we're doing a notifies restart on the Tomcat service. Basically what this will do is once this is enacted, the remote file, it will contact the, the Tomcat service and say, hey, can you, I need you to restart. Okay, so as I mentioned, we need to add depends for the Jenkins cookbook, so it depends on the Tomcat cookbook. So we're going to go to our metadata RB file. And that's at the same level as the attributes and recipes, right underneath the Jenkins cookbook. And this, there's a metadata for each, for each uh, cookbook. Okay, there we go. We have a depends on Tomcat. Basically, what happens is it takes everything from this array and then just does a depends, which is a chef way of just training a dependency. Um, if, you all, if you also have like a dependency on PowerShell, you just toss this in here and it will work just the same. So this way we can access all of Tomcat's attributes. Um, one thing we need to do is we need to go and give Tomcat a metadata RV file as well. And it doesn't have one. We don't need to depend on anything, so all we need to do is just name it. There we go, we have Tomcat. Okay, so that's it for the cookbooks. Uh, we currently have Tomcat installing using some pretty pretty nice logic. And then we also have Jenkins that's putting the remote file on the war uh, or in the web apps directory. So the last thing we need to do before we start running this is we need to create a JSON file, uh, a run list. I've already created this, but we can walk through it. So basically what this is, is a JSON run list is a file that contains a list of recipes to install. You can also put attributes that you want to override it, that uh, would be, if you were to put the Jenkins, the URL like I put in the attributes for Jenkins, if I wanted this to be different uh, for this, for a single particular run, then inside my run list I would put my overriding attribute. I'm not going to go too far in this, I just wanted to point that out. But anyways, so when running Chef using this run list, it will install Tomcat, and then it will install Jenkins, and any dependencies that they require. So now we've built out our cookbooks, we need to have Chef run them. 
And for the screencast, I'm going to be using Chef Solo. Chef Solo is an execution mechanism of Chef that expects you to give it a path of cookbooks along with a run list and tell Chef what to install. So in order to get Chef Solo working, I need to create an EC2 instance, install Chef, and then place the cookbooks and run list on the instance. I'm going to do this by using a cloud formation template that will install Chef and download the run list of cookbooks. Uh, and before I do that, I need to create a cookbooks zip file um, and then upload the run list. So I'm going to delete these two. And then I'm going to upload. Next thing I do, I'm going to create, make these public so that they're easy to access and there's no real complexity. Okay, so now I'm going to run the template and, and within a couple of minutes we should have an environment. And rest the station to it. So now I'm going to become uh, root, which is what you need to run Chef. And then I'm going to go into the Chef directory where everything I, all my Chef stuff is. I have my, well I have my cookbooks directory, my solo RB, my solo JS. So now I just need to run Chef solo and J solo JS and then solo B C solo RB. So I'm just passing in the run list and then the file that tells me where to get my Chef cookbooks. So I'm just going to run this and we should have a working check system. Perfect. Tomcat seems to be working. I do want to point out that one thing I, I forgot to change, this used to be home, and this used to be home as well. They needed to be changed to user and group. So just a, just a side note, and then, then you can try to reinstall So because it should initially fail what, while complaining that the user, the home and home weren't, aren't available for the group and owner. But it says that we so assuming you make those changes, this should work, and then if we were to go to here and then put in the Tomcat direct or the instance ADA Jenkins, it should pop up with the Jenkins uh, running system. And there it is. Great. So as a side note, although I did manually check to see if Tomcat was running or the Jenkins was up and available, uh, generally in, the real, in a real world environment I would write a cucumber test that would verify Tomcat's state as an automated test rather than doing a manual check. Creating a screencast on this particular topic in the coming months and that there are a few things I left out. So OpsCode, the company that created and maintains Chef, has a lot of cookbooks that have already been ran to accompli accomplish some of these tasks. Specifically Tomcat, which is their Tomcat cookbook is extremely versatile and it does a lot more than simply installing the package. If I were to be building a more complex solution than just an example on how to run Chef, then I would be installing Chef, or I would look towards their ops codes cookbooks uh, prior to writing my own. And I also, I use Chef Solo in the screencast, but they, they also have a master-slave configuration where you, you can either use ops codes hosted Chef solution or you create your own Chef server. I will be going into this in future screencasts as well. If you want to learn more about Chef, I recommend looking at their wiki, uh, wiki.opsco.com, and then also join the Chef mailing list. If you like the screencast and want to get updates when new ones are posted, hit the like button and then subscribe to our channel. And if you have any feedback or inquiries, please email, email us at info at .com. Tweet me at the handle at Brian Jackovich or leave a comment in the YouTube